Hi, so my name is Jovan. So as we mentioned, I'm a senior program manager in Azure Synapse Analytics, and I'm working on various Microsoft data services in the last eight years. So I started on parallel data warehouse, then switched to SQL Server 2016, then Azure SQL database, banished instance, and now I'm working on Synapse Analytics. So in this session, I'll try to explain what is Azure Synapse Analytics, the service that is currently in preview. And I will focus on Synapse SQL serverless engine that is one part of Azure Synapse Analytics. We will see something about SQL language enhancements, uh, like new Opera offset function and new features that we have in language. And I will show you what is the unified analytic platform that we are building. So first and most important things, uh, what is the difference between Azure Synapse Analytics that is currently in preview and Data Warehouse? So the most of the questions we are getting are, uh, is what is the difference between SQL Data Warehouse that is renamed to Azure Synapse Analytics and this new Synapse workspace that is currently in preview? So if you, you are using Azure SQL Data Warehouse, this is rena just renamed to Azure Synapse Analytics, and this is fully GA that you can use as any other GA service in Azure. Synapse Workspace is something completely new. Synapse Workspace is a new service that is in public preview, and Azure SQL Data Warehouse is just one part of this new service called Azure Synapse Workspace. So in Synapse Workspace, you will have Azure SQL Data Warehouse that is now called uh, Synapse Pool. And you will also have new features like uh, Web Studio that enables you to organize your scripts around the queries, serverless SQL uh, on-demand query service that I will talk today. You have Apache Spark, Engine, Pipelines, Links, uh, and connections to Power BI and all other data sources. So this is the most important difference that you need to understand between Azure Synapse Analytics, uh, that is GA, and current preview feature. And another important question is how you pronounce Azure Synapse Analytics, because uh, it is Synapse Analytics, not Synapse or something uh, like this. So let's first see what is Azure Synapse Analytics workspace and what you are getting when you create new workspace. So if you create your first workspace, you're getting something that we call serverless SQL pool. This is completely serverless SQL Server query engine that has no internal data. So there are no internal tables where you can load data. Uh, and purpose of this engine is to enable you to query data in Azure Data Lake Storage and Azure Cosmos DB. So imagine this as something like completely uh, independent serverless poly-based functionality that enables you just to provision some service and run some queries that actually run on remote data sources like Azure Data Lake storages or Cosmos DB. In addition to this, you're getting Synapse Studio. This is one web tool that enables you to create your SQL queries, organize your database, link all data sources that you want to analyze. And these two things are completely new. So with uh, Synapse Workspace default uh, configuration, you're getting one web tool that enables you to query data and one serverless endpoint that enables you qu to query data on any other data source. Uh, and in this configuration, you don't have something like internal tables where you need to load data and design your data. You're just querying your external data as is. Now, important thing here is that in this default stateless configuration, there is no upfront cost. So here you are not picking how many cores you need, how many storage you need, how many data warehousing units you need. So in this scenario, when you provision your workspace, you're not paying anything. You're getting charged when you start running your queries. So when you run some query using <coughs> Master Studio, Azure Data Studio, Power BI, you are charged per data processed. So it is something like uh, $10 per terabyte of data processed. Uh, the price depends on re regions. But generally, if you're not running any queries, you're not 
spending any date, any money. So you don't need to worry about uh, provisioning, uh, scaling up, scaling out, uh, posing the instances. So if you don't need it, you are not paying for less. Now, in addition to the serverless endpoint, you can create additional databases that are sta stateful. So these are SQL pool databases. These are true data warehouses, databases, where you can create your internal tables, you can create column store indexes, you can use result set caching, you can use all these features that you need to have in one modern cloud data warehouse. Uh, in this component of Synapse Analytics, you need to pre-provision resources. So in this uh, uh, provisioning model, you need to specify that you want to have this amount of cores or data warehouse units, and then you're paying uh, for provisioned resources. So there is a trade-off between serverless and provisioned. If you don't want to pay for anything when you're not using it, you're using serverless. When you want to have guaranteed resources, minimum, uh, some amount of resources like 64 cores or something like this, you are using provisioned. So this amount of compute is always reserved for you, but you are paying for less. So this uh, Synapse uh, SQL pool is actually what you see in current data warehouse with many additional enhancements that are coming. In addition to SQL pool, you can have a provisioned Spark pool. So provisioned Spark pool is actually uh, Apache Spark uh, uh, service that is Synapse workspace. So this is not data bricks Spark. It is uh, pure uh, open source vanilla Apache Spark that is compatible with any Apache Spark distribution around the world. So these three computes are not just three random uh, runtimes or compute engines that are just placed under the same uh, label. So you will see that we have full integration of these services in terms of uh, metadata and security. So you will see that when you create uh, uh, users on one on Synapse workspace, these users are applied on all compute engines. When you create uh, tables in Spark, these tables are automatically synchronized in SQL pools. So we are trying to make uh, to create three different engines that enables you to work on the same data sets. So to have it tightly integrated. So this is kind of configuration of runtimes, but we are adding more here. So uh, maybe you heard the announcement that Azure Data Explorer is will be added to Synapse workspace. So soon we will have a new compute in this picture. Now, in addition to default data sources like Azure Data Lake Storage and Cosmos DB, you can create various link services. So link services are the, the same that you have in Azure Data Factory, where you can create link services to any other link services in Azure Data. And you can use Azure Data uh, Factory or data pipelines and the integrated Power BI reports to move data from various link services to various uh, Azure Data Lake Storage, Cosmos DBs, or in managed tables, or to create reports on, on all these data sources. So this is Synapse Analytics Workspace. So Synapse Analytics Workspace is complete solution for modern data analytics and processing that has anything that you will probably need to analyze your data in Azure. So the biggest value that Synapse Workspace provides is that you have choice in choosing what kind of runtime and what kind of engine you want to use to analyze your data. So if you have, if you need something like uh, Upper Spark, because you have teams of data scientists that are using Spark, you can create your Upper Spark instance and you can use it as any other Upper Spark instance in the world. If you have teams that have SQL skills and need to integrate uh, your data with Power BI and other SQL centric tools, you can create your data warehouse. If you don't want to always uh, pre provision your resources and always pay for guaranteed resources and then pause and resume your data warehouse, you can use serverless SQL with the same surface area and analyze the same data. So the biggest value here is that you have a choice to choose what kind of compute engine you want to use and how you want to analyze your data. Uh, 
So this is just a start. Synapse workspace is, is expanding and we will add more data sources, more file formats, more, more engines. So definitely this will be the future of analytics in Azure data. So I will talk about uh, serverless Synapse SQL pool. So this is actually one component of SQL uh, of uh, Synapse workspace that enables your SQL centric tools like Power BI, Azure Data Studio, Management Studio, Azure Analytics Service to run classic T-SQL queries and to read data from Azure Storage. In addition to this, uh, we are always uh, synchronizing metadata from Synapse Spark, upper Spark pools into Synapse SQL, uh, serverless Synapse SQL pool. So the recommended scenarios for C uh, SQL serverless are data exploration, where you want to see what is in some your data in Azure Data Lake or Cosmos DB. So you just want to run something like select star from some folder or some collection in uh, Cosmos DB or Azure Data Lake. Logical data warehousing, where you create set of external tables, views, procedures, functions that are created on top of your remote data. So the idea here is that your client tools like Power BI will just see some tables and views and functions without understanding that data is actually placed outside of database. So you don't need to load all data in your database in order to start running some reports. And data transformation. So SQL Serverless enables you to easily transform your data using CTAS command. But so you can just select some data from uh, several uh, tables or files, and you can just write this into a new table on Azure Data Lake Storage. So this is something like easy to use TC call ETL jobs that you can run completely in serverless fashion. So this is probably the main pattern that uh, Synapse SQL Serverless enables you to implement. So you have various sources. Uh, and you are using Azure Data Factory to load your data from various sources into Azure Data Lake Storage. So when, once you load your data, you want to explore these files and you can use classic SQL language to explore files on Data Lake Storage. So what you can do, you can either directly uh, read data from uh, uh, query your files, or you can create something like views or external tables on top of your Azure Data Lake files and then join uh, different data if needed. With these capabilities, you can easily take this data and just show it in uh, Power mm -hmm. BI as any other report, or you can run ad hoc queries in Azure Data Studio. Another interesting pattern is connector to big data. So imagine some services like Azure SQL Managed Instance, uh, SQL Server before uh, uh, 2016 that don't have Polybase capability. So uh, since uh, Synapse SQL is a, a standard T-SQL endpoint, you can use your Azure SQL Managed Instance and just create link server that connects to your SQL, Synapse SQL query endpoint, and then run four part name queries that are actually querying your Azure storage. All computation like reading files, comp uh, making computation is done in Synapse SQL compute, and it does not affect your resources in Managed Instance. And also in this scenario, you are paying only for data processed in Synapse SQL. It, it, it will not affect uh, your managed instance or SQL server. So Synapse SQL enables any client that understands the T-SQL language to connect to your data lake and run queries on remote data. Another interesting pattern is Synapse Link. So if you're using something like Cosmos DB and you want to do something analytic, like analytics on Cosmos DB, this is not easy because Cosmos DB is optimized for OLTP patterns where you insert data, but not for high, uh, for some analytical pattern. For that reason, Cosmos DB is exporting all data into internal data lake storage where data is cooked and optimized for analytics. Synapse SQL has access to this data internal data lake storage. So if you have some Power BI, Azure Analytics Service, Azure Data Studio tools, they can use open row set to directly query your internal uh, data lake storage without affecting your workload on Azure Cosmos DB 
transactional storage. So this should be practically very performant and very cheap solution for analytics on NoSQL data because we are not using some Cosmos DB resource unit, so we are not spending anything. You're always charged per data processed, and you will never uh, spend any resources on Cosmos DB. And in addition to this, you will have full T-SQL surface area, so you can use window aggregate, joining different collections, and do anything that you can do in your classic T-SQL. So we believe that this will merge the best of both worlds, a rich surface area and low-cost analytics. So let's see a demo about data exploration with uh, Synapse Serverless. So this is my uh, this is my uh, workspace where I can have where I can see all my resources that I need to analyze. So here I have my Azure Cosmos DB account, and I have some Azure Data Lake storage accounts that I want to analyze. So here, this Synapse Studio that is web tool, I can uh, get all data sources in Azure that I need to analyze and create some reports. So let me first see what is in my uh, Azure Data Lake storage workspace. So here I have some files like CSV files. So I can easily preview this file to see what is inside. So here I have COVID cases reported in, uh, in past, uh, well, in past year. So what can I do? I can easily run some T-SQL script that will use open row set function that reads data from this file that I referenced here. So I just need to specify that my format is CSV and I will get the content of my file. Okay, so here I have uh, first, uh, in first line, I have this uh, header. So I need to specify first row equal to in order to skip this header. So Synapse will run this query, read content of this file, and here I can easily explore what are the columns in my CSV file. So here I have date reported, number of COVID cases, etc. Once I get this result set, I can easily do something like analytics, like group by or something similar on this data set. Now I can do the same with uh, other file types like JSON. So here I have my JSON line files. So if I run my open row set command, I will get all my JSON documents that are placed in this JSON line documents. So I can easily use JSON value function, open JSON function to split this into relational columns and do some analytics on JSON file. So what is recommended format for analytics is parquet. So first you can see here that Parquet is, uh, sorry, I missed this. Parquet is much uh, smaller than CSV and, uh, um, and JSON. And analytic on Parquet files is much faster than any other file format. So here you can see that I easily, very quickly got the content of this Parquet file. So, the, this is the main uh, scenario for uh, uh, data exploration in Synapse SQL. I have some files on my uh, storage and I can easily browse results. Now let's see another example. Here I have one CSV file that contains information about towns, dates, and maximum and minimum temp temperature in, uh, this is in uh, Germany. So let me see the results. Let me try to see what is what is inside of this file. I'll run this query where I run Opera set read this file. And I will get content of this file. Now, if you look at this, you will see one problem. This is Dieseldorf. You understand that this is not how you spell uh, right Dieseldorf. Here I have a problem because my file is UTF-8 file and this uh, column is returned as var car. 
So if you read uh, UTF-8 files, you need to use varchar uh, uh, columns with UTF-8 collation. So in this case, I have my database that has some default collation. So this is SQL Latin general. But in order to read uh, UTF-8 characters, I need to set up my collation in my database to be something like UTF-8 collation. So now if I read these files, read, read the content of this file, you will see that I'm getting correct results. Here, Dieselorf is returned as correct result. So this is very important because in many cases, customers are having UTF-8 files and then forgetting to use UTF-8 collation to read UTF-8 files. Okay, so now let me uh, run some report on this file. So this report, let me, this report will read content of this file, group everything by first column, see one that is down, and return maximum temperature in this file. Now you might see one issue here. So I have entries, Duren, Düsseldorf, Düsseldorf. So you can see that somebody entered uh, U with umload, uh, sometime with properly with umload, and sometime with, with UE. In some cases, this might be error, but in some cases, this might be correct, if it, because in some cases, it might be correct to use UE with uh, same time that you have U. Now, however, in this case, I'm getting wrong result because for the same town, I'm getting uh, different values. So if I add count column here, I can see that I have uh, two entries that are spelled with do, do a Zeldorf and 28 entries spelled properly with Düsseldorf. Now, if you're doing some data analytics, in some cases you might consider this as dirty data and do some complex search and replace in your data sources or some replace in T-SQL to fix this problem. But the true power of SQL engine is that we have full support for collations. So if you look at this uh, table, this view, you will see that Synapse SQL is supporting all collations from SQL Server, including German phone book collation that are UTF-8. So German phone book collation contains all German linguistical rules. So if I change collation of my database to be German phone book UTF-8, and if I run this query again, I will see that my results are now fine because linguistical rules in SQL Server Engine or Synapse SQL can have rules that know that uh, in German language, U with umlaut is same as UE. So this kind of tricks where you know that you can leverage built-in support for local uh, linguistic rules in Synapse SQL may save a lot of time in your data analysis. So instead of cleaning this data, doing some weird uh, switch case statements that are trying to fix this, you can just reuse your collation for your uh, language and you can get uh, correct results immediately without any effort. So in addition to uh, Azure Data Lake storage, you can analyze data in Cosmos DB. So here I can just pick my a storage account, Cosmos DB store demographics, and I will get this uh, open row st statement that has a key, uh, that has a account, a database, and key. So the only thing that I need to do here is to enter the key in this uh, statement, and I will run the query and get data from my Cosmos DB account. So this way I can easily browse my data in Azure Data Lake Storage and Cosmos DB with uh, just T-SQL language. So, 
So, okay. <laughs> five minutes to go, you know, Johan? Five minutes to go, okay. Yeah. So, uh, I will switch this, and I will show you one additional demo that might be more interesting for you. So, I already told you that uh, uh, the main purpose of SQL serverless is to be bridge between tools that are like Power BI, Azure Synapse Analytic, uh, Azure Analytics Services, and storage files. So here I created a logical data warehouse with set of tables, external tables that are referencing external data. So Power BI, Azure Analytics Service don't know what is the difference between internal table and table that reference some external data. So here is one ex interesting example. So here I'm connecting to my Synapse Analytics workspace, this on-demand serverless uh, endpoint using SQL Server Management Studio. So here I can see all my databases like retail store, logical data warehouse, that kind of things. And here I can create views or external tables that are referencing some data in uh, Cosmos DB or in uh, Azure Data Lake Storage. So here I have three uh, views that are referencing product sales and store demographics in Cosmos DB. And I have external tables that are referencing same data on Azure Data Lake Storage. So if you look at this a set of reports that I'm running on my SQL serverless, you can see that if I run select star from Cosmos DB product, client tools cannot understand is this actually Cosmos DB data because this is just custom schema or this actual table in uh, uh, SQL in uh, some SQL database. So when I run this query, any tool will just see result set like it is from some internal table. So here I can do some interesting things like I can create some report that can join external table store that references some data in uh, Azure Data Lake Storage. So this is some parquet file. And I'm joining this with Cosmos DB uh, view that is referencing some collection in Cosmos DB. So here I am getting a result where I can just join these two uh, data sets, do something like where, group by, order by, and I'm getting a result the same way as I'm doing with classic database tables. So I can use, I can create any report with any complexity, and my client tools will not be able to understand difference between external data in Cosmos DB and internal data in databases. Another interesting case is, imagine that I have my managed instance or SQL server, where I need to have something like polybase capability. So what I can do, I can create my uh, link server that references some Synapse SQL endpoint, and I can run something like remote queries. So here I'm running something like select star from open row set for some file, but not on my managed instance. I'm running this remotely on my remote link server that is actually Synapse SQL. So if, if I look at this plan, I will just see that managed instance or SQL server just send some remote query operator, remote scan operator that will execute this query on my remote Synapse SQL workspace. So with this capability, I can do very interesting things like this is something that nobody used before. I will use my adventure works database. And I will run this query. So what is this query doing? I'm joining a retail sale for I'm using four part name to join retail sales table from my Azure Data Lake storage with products table in my Cosmos DB collection, uh, store demographics in my uh, Azure Data Lake storage, with sales store, this is internal database table in my AdventureWorks database. So here I'm creating join between Cosmos DB, Azure Data Lake, and Managed Instance database, and I'm getting one report. So here I can connect some Power BI report that will join all these three data sets and return me the result. Now, interesting thing that you might ask, what is happening here? Would managed instance just read all data from this table, from this table, from this table, and then join it in managed instance with this database table? 
Now let's look at execution plan. So as you can see here, in the execution plan, I have only one remote query operator and I have only one scan of database table. So SQL Server Query uh, Anal Optimizer knows that he needs to uh, merge these three uh, joins between these three external tables that are referenced with four part name and it will just send one remote query that will join these three tables remotely on my Synapse SQL workspace, return result of this join, and then join it with this store table in my managed instance, and then do hash match, string aggregate, and calculate results here. So with this, you can create very powerful federated queries that spawns on different multiple data sources. So that's everything that I want to mention in this presentation. Yeah, thank you very much, Johan. It was a pleasure. And uh, yeah, so if anybody has a question, feel free. Uh, here is one a question from Jonas. Uh, when does Synapse Workspace become GA? So it is, this is still not confirmed, but I hope that it will be very soon, in like a couple of months. OK. So, OK, so far I don't see any more questions. Then, Johan, thank you so much for having you here in our um, in our conference. Thank you for attending and for giving this great presentation. And all the best to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.